Let's talk about the big news that happened yesterday, although there was numerous things. We heard the Aaron Jones deal was getting reworked by Ian Rappaport whenever he announced the Josh Jacobs signing to the Green Bay Packers. First of all, Green Bay Packers signing Josh Jacobs. Did we have any idea that that was coming? And then the Aaron Jones rework into the release. Did we have any idea that was coming from those that are close to the operation on an everyday basis like yourself, Mr. Schneidman? So here's what happened from uh, a couple people I've talked to with knowledge of the situation. So the Packers knew they had to get in the know numbered. at, at the, the time. time. Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly. Um, there is no doubting that Aaron Jones is, when healthy, one of the best running backs in football. He showed it the last five games of the season. He's entering the last year of his contract this year, or was, and his base salary plus his bonuses were around $12 million. What I was told was the Packers wanted to cut that number by about 50%. Um, so they started negotiations with Drew Rosenhaus, Jones's agent, before the combine. Didn't make much progress over the final two weeks. Um, and last Friday presented Drew and Aaron Jones's camp with their final offer. Um, Drew, in turn, countered that. And the Packers basically said, from my understanding, that was our final offer. Uh, we're going to move on. At that point is when they went on and looked at, OK, can we afford any of these top running backs? They settled on Josh Jacobs, got him. But it was a stark change because on February 1st, Brian Gutekunst said to us, we absolutely expect Aaron Jones back. Now, Aaron Jones wanted to remain a Packer for life. It just turned out that his side was not willing to take the amount of a pay cut that the Packers were asking him to take. And now they turn to a guy who is more than three years younger than Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones was probably only going to be with the Packers for another year anyway. Okay, so... Less money than Josh Jacobs was offered Aaron Jones, we can assume? I think that's a, a safe assumption, yes. He, so that's Josh where Jacobs Aaron Jones said <laughs> that that's probably where it got turned off. <laughs> if I, pay cut too. Yeah, if, I assume that's probably where it got turned off. So the Packers probably, because of what you said there about Josh Jacobs being younger, and we love Aaron Jones, love Josh Jacobs as yeah. well. So this is not just like in any uh, – there's no shade towards anybody. And also – I obviously you've reported and talked about it. At one point, I wondered about Goody. Now it's just like I trust yeah. Goody. I trust Goody. Mm -hmm. Like I trust Goody Goods. What he's going to do? They probably had in their mind they were okay, completely okay if Aaron Jones did not accept that deal as they were pitching it to Aaron Jones and going forward with Josh Jacobs being a guy that they thought would take them over the hump potentially. Yeah, I mean they love Aaron Jones. There's no denying that. But as we all know, there's a business side to this too. You can at one time be thrilled with what Aaron Jones gave you the last five games and think, okay, when healthy, he's really good, but also realize we got to look out for the long-term interests of this franchise. He just came off his most injury-hampered season of his seven-year career. He turns 30 next season. What's the best decision for the long-term interests of this franchise? So for about an hour there, I thought we were going to have an Aaron Jones, Josh Jacobs backfield. Oh, me Packers too. Get Ty was now splooging Josh all over the place on our <laughs> yeah. show. He was. He was like, we got the best running back tandem in the mm -hmm. NFL by far. Yeah, maybe ever. And then Jordan Love <laughs> hasn't even like showcased his – running as much like he'll extend plays but they haven't really even got into any of the that he certainly can do mm -hmm. so if you got aaron jones and you have josh jacobs and you explore a little bit more with jordan love running plus with the young weapons it's like <laughs> wait a minute look out. ty had lombardi aspirations <laughs> not that he doesn't do. more do. yeah not that he does anymore but that was a good time there for a little bit seemed weird if that was going to be the case for sure but obviously it all got sorted excited to see where aaron jo oh he's in the vikings yeah. Oh, uh, you guys will see no. him play. He's too old, Schneidman said with his sleeve. Yeah. Back to Tone Diggs. Tone, what did you want to know exactly? Xavier from McKinney. Yeah. Xavier uh, McKinney. Yeah, I, I think I wouldn't call it a misconception, but there is kind of this notion that the Packers aren't big spenders in free agency. The past couple of years, they haven't really been able to since they put all their, their pennies into the middle for the last couple of years of the Aaron Rodgers era. This is a massive signing. The Packers' top three safeties from last season were all unrestricted free agents. Uh, Darnell Savage, Jonathan Owens, who is uh, Simone Biles' husband, mm -hmm. and then Rudy Ford. So the Packers go and land the top safety on the market. Mm -hmm. This guy played every single snap last year, has a knack for the ball. Jeff Halfley, their new defensive coordinator, is a proponent of you know playing one high safety looks. To do that, you need a playmaking center fielder in the deep middle of that defense, and Xavier McKinney can do that better 
Ty, you can attest to this than anyone since what? Mike DeHyde, Nick Collins. When's yeah. the last oh, guy they? Hyde, when's the last available. time they yeah. had a guy like this? Ha ha, Clint. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, huge uh, deal, huge signing, uh, great activity out of the Packers. Before the last couple of years, where the Packers haven't been able to spend, have they notoriously spent or have... not really? I mean, they they got you know Charles Woodson and like Julius Peppers, so they've landed like a couple marquee guys. But no, they don't they don't typically do this. But speaking of that, like there are still a couple holes out there. Obviously, Devondre Campbell gets released, Matt, um, and then I think a lot of Packers fans, you know, look at Patrick Queen and some of those other guys that are available out there. Do you think the Packers are done? Are they going to make any more moves, or are they kind of looking ahead at the draft where they have, you know, a decent amount of picks this year, and obviously Gudikin's track record with the draft the last couple of years has been spectacular? Yeah, five picks in the top 91 because of the, hmm. the Aaron Rodgers trade and the Rasul Douglas trade and additional Was that a first-rounder for Aaron? Supposed to no, be. I don't think he played 65% of the snaps. <laughs> oh, it was a second round. Did not get a first round for Aaron Rodgers. No. Oh, I don't okay. think he met the criteria. Um, but Brian Gutekunst okay. did say don't need a couple Jordan weeks Love, ago. Jordan loves guy. Jordan loves guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good, 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 good. Uh, Gutekunst said a couple weeks ago, who knows, he might trade draft picks for a veteran player. Legereus Sneed is out there. The Packers might need another cornerback. So um, I think they might be done with the big signings in free agency. I could be wrong. They need depth at edge rusher, corner, inside linebacker if they release Devondre Campbell. Um, but they can also look to the draft and, and use some of that draft capital to get a guy. They, they have a lot of room. And uh, as we saw last year, this is a team to watch. Last question. Um, I assume you're going to pitch in to help, and everybody is that's covering the Green Bay Packers because, boy, if this wasn't the right pick, it would be tough times for the next 10 years or so potentially in Green Bay. Jordan loves a guy. Jordan loves a beast. Jordan loves an animal. Feels like the way they played the Jordan Love pick was perfectly now. Hindsight 2020. The offense is young. He's great. He's only going to get better. Is there an extension coming? I don't think I fully understand his contract setup. They picked up his fifth year option. He has one year left. Are they going to sign him? He signed an extension or two year deal. What what is it exactly? And is that deal going to happen this offseason? When do we expect that to get finished? So Jordan Love signed a one year extension on May 3rd, 2023, to basically uh, prevent the Packers from guaranteeing him around $20 million on his fifth-year option, which would have been 2024, because they didn't want to guarantee him $20 million bucks without knowing if he was any good before he ever started a game. So basically what happened is they guaranteed him a bunch of money up front for last season without tying them to much on the back end just in case he stunk. Uh, he doesn't stink. So the CBA says you can't sign another contract extension until 12 months after your last one. So he signed his last one on May 3rd. The earliest he can sign his new one, which he's going to sign for a crap ton of money, yeah. is May 3rd. So nothing's going to happen for the next you know, seven weeks, but he's going to get a big payday. David Mulugeta, who is his agent, is going to make sure he gets every last dollar. Um, I don't know if it's going to start with a $50 million, a mid to high $40 million, but it's going to be a lot of freaking money. 